Hi, my name is Charlie McGrath. I'm the founder of WideAwakeNews.com and a host on the Rinse Radio Network. This past Friday, just a few days ago, towards the tail end of the Olympics, when there was plenty of uh, distractions going on, the Department of Justice came out and said it did not have enough evidence under current laws to prosecute Goldman Sachs for their involvement in the subprime mortgage fiasco that has led the world to the brink of uh, financial Armageddon, who's led the world to the brink of uh, sovereign debt overload. There's not enough evidence for the Department of Justice to go after Goldman Sachs, even though in April 2010, Goldman Sachs had to pay $550 million in fines in a civil suit uh, involving the subprime crisis. In 2012, there's just not enough evidence to prosecute the too-big-to-fail Goldman Sachs. You know, if you think you're participating by voting Romney, if you think you're participating by voting Obama, you're really dancing in the dark. If you want to participate in our political system, if you want to vote for somebody that has real influence and power, Right in, Goldman Sachs. They have more power than any party. In fact, they own both the parties. They will write the legislation that governs this country. Our Department of Justice, our Department of Justice that is supposed to be working on behalf of the American people, cannot go after Goldman Sachs because the laws aren't in place to do so. They don't have enough evidence. There is evidence up to your neck of Goldman Sachs' involvement uh, in pimping some of these products that uh, help sink the mortgage market in this country and sink economies of the world. If we can just look back to 2007, we see Fabulous Fab writing an email to a buddy of his telling him how when this all implodes, which it did a year later, he would be one of the only ones standing because he understood the complexity of the highly leveraged exotic uh, trades that were going on that were guaranteed to make Goldman Sachs money. Now, after the bailouts, the backdoor bailouts through AIG, some of uh, some estimates put it up over $37 plus billion plus of your money. This isn't AIG money. This is American taxpayer money that went to bail out Goldman Sachs. We had Lloyd Blankfein, CEO, come out and say, Goldman Sachs is doing God's work. Apparently they are because they're completely and totally untouchable. No evidence, the De Department of Justice claims. Even though in uh, uh, 2012, March, we had Greg Smith, a former Goldman Sachs employee, come out and issue a letter to, uh, through the New York Times, his resignation letter, pointing out exactly why he is leaving. Because he works, and I'm paraphrasing, for a bunch of scumbags that will stop at nothing to amass wealth and put their failure onto the people, their clients. And in, in, in a lot of cases, the clients end up being the taxpayers of the United States and the taxpayers of the world. It isn't just the United States. Greg Smith says, if you want to get ahead at Goldman Sachs, there's three simple things you can do. A, you can uh, execute the firm's axes. Get clients to buy junk that Goldman Sachs can't, Goldman Sachs can't make a profit on. B, hunt elephants. Go after these big-time investors, some of them sophisticated, some of them not, and get them to trade. One day, uh, trade. Next day, trade. Keep trading as long as Goldman Sachs can turn a profit on making those trades. And the third way is to find yourself in a position where you're trading illiquid, opaque products with three-letter acronyms. This is exactly what Goldman Sachs does. They make highly leveraged exotic investment vehicles and they dump it onto the people of the world. And when it all blows up in their face, they get governments that they they fund and purchase uh, to put the burden on the taxpayers of the people of the world. And this is exactly where we're at in the year 2012. You know, people are going to say now, going into this 2012 election cycle, well, that was 2008. It's a long time ago. It isn't a long time ago. We're still in the midst of of what has occurred uh, in 2008. We're still feeling the carnage of the destruction that these too big to fails uh, leveled on this planet. Right now in the United States, we have 47 million people on food stamps. You know, back in 2007, that number was 20 million less. We have 1.2 million bankruptcies this year, and we're almost at a million foreclosures so far in the year 2012. We spent $40,000 every single second in deficit in order to rescue an economy that companies like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America City, they all helped implode. And we can't even seek justice through our representative government. And when we try to, they tell us there's just not enough evidence to do so. It's unbelievable. We are sitting in a time, we went through the greatest uh, decline since the Depression of 29 into the 30s. And we're sitting in a time when the American people have absolutely zero representative government. Zero representation in Washington, D.C. If you think for one second that we're going to get Mitt Romney in there to clean things up, you truly are in the dark. Mitt Romney, 2012, number one 
uh, contrib- uh, contributor, number one corporate contributor, guess who? Goldman Sachs. Who's number two? J.P. Morgan Chase. Who's number three? Morgan Stanley. Number four, Bank of America. Number five, uh, Credit Suisse. And number six, Citigroup. Do you think for one second that Romney's going to come in there and fix the wagon? <laughs> what Romney is driving the wagon for Goldman Sachs, just like in 2008, the number one corporate contributor to Barack Obama was, of course, Goldman Sachs. This nightmare is going to continue until we realize who brought us here, until we realize that these people need to be called out. These people need to be arrested. These people need to be perp-walked. And instead of telling us how they're doing God's work, we need to see them in orange jumpsuits on the nightly news so they can stand trial for their crimes and we can uh, have justice uh, done to these people, in prison for the rest of their lives, seize their assets. We've already paid for these institutions. They, and As far as I'm concerned, these are, these are public institutions at this point. These are utilities that the American taxpayer own at this point. We are sitting here, a nation in ruins, and I know the mainstream media wants to cover it up and pretend everything's fine. But the fact of the matter is, if we look at some real basic numbers, by June of 2011, home prices have fallen in this country more than they did during the Great Depression. By May of 2012, we have the lowest participation rate in the employment force in the history of the nation. And yet, on uh, late in August of 2012, we have the Department of Justice telling us the people who engineered this collapse cannot be prosecuted because they don't have enough evidence. But in the same article, in the same day, you can read about how a North Dakota farmer can be tracked and and, uh, arrested using a predator drone because he grabbed some cattle that went onto his land. This isn't a free nation. We're not a free people. We are people that are being dominated by financial special interests. And if we don't realize right now that they own the entire political system, we will wake up complete and total debt slaves, indentured servants in this neo-feudal system. A bunch of stories are attached. Please read them all and spread them. That's all I got.